I'm King Link, and it's time to talk about what's new on Game Pass for August 2022. I'll talk about the name change at the end, but don't worry, this is still the same coverage you have come to love. If you're new, I cover the PC version of Game Pass, which is everything you see in these images, except for Torment Tides of Elysium. But I will say that is a fantastic RPG with a text-heavy design. I think Disco Elysium does that style of game a little bit better, but that's not to say Torment isn't worth checking out as well. Oh, I guess I am going to cover all of them. I played every game this month for a night, whatever that means, and now I'll tell you how they play, who will like them, and if you should check them out. Let's get started with this game on the screen. Hey, what the hell was that? Doesn't matter. We need to hurry. As Dusk Falls, a slideshow visual novel. As Dusk Falls reminds me a lot of David Cage's work. There are extremely intricate choice patterns where a decent amount of changes to the story can happen. The characters are well written and interesting, the voice acting is extremely good, and the situations that players find themselves in are intense. If you like story driven games, you might like this one. I'm a huge fan of this genre, and I honestly can't stand As Dusk Falls. I played this for three hours, and I struggled the whole time. It's really the art. Everything else clicks on all cylinders, but the art feels extremely lazy, where it's mostly a slideshow. This is how the entire game looks, and this is not a tiny team from the credits. I don't know why they chose to make the game look like this, but I can say it bothered me, and if you don't like the look here, you might not get into this game. Pick this up if you want a David Cage style game and can deal with how the scenes are presented as you're seeing here. I feel like Road 96 was a better experience, and while I do like the story told here, I was unable to get past that art, even though I did give this a decent amount of time. Here we go. Nice. The not so secret emails. Watch Drugs 2. Ubisoft, but you're a hacker. Oh, Ubisoft, we're gonna do this dance again. Watch Dogs 2 is a sort of sequel to the first Watch Dogs game. You're a different person with a different form of dead sec, with different characters in a different location. So it's really strange to call this a direct sequel, but that's what Ubisoft did. The game plays well, using a push button approach to hacking that worked in the first game. This time around though, I didn't enjoy the characters' story. The writing feels a bit juvenile at times, with the characters swearing excessively, and I normally would like swearing. The team talks about being non-violent, but lets you create pistols and ignore the number of people you kill. It's a sandbox game, but it's also one that lets you violate the thematic elements often. The core element of the side missions is a need to gain followers so you can become bigger influencers and get more main missions. Ugh. Pick this up if you like Watch Dogs 1 and want to see what the sequel looks like. It's not a bad game. I actually gave it a 3 out of 5 when I originally reviewed it, and while the technical problems appear to be fixed, it's just not a very strong title. If you're in love with the idea of a weak hacking game or Ubisoft's formula, you're still gonna have a lot of fun. Give me a target. Sins of a Solar Empire Rebellion, an extremely complex RTS complete with a large tech tree and lacking tutorial. Sins of a Solar Empire Rebellion is an old title. The game originally came out in 2012, and if you look up any information on the game, you're going to find a lot of old posts. This is a complex real-time strategy game where you take over parts of the galaxy, fight against enemies, work to control precious resources, and defend against pirate raids. This is a very tactical-based game that is played out in real time. Sins of a Solar Empire, though, has a common problem with the genre. There's a lot to take in. I don't know if I could truly give this a full review without playing potentially a hundred hours or more. The issue I have with it is I really don't want to play that long. So much of this game isn't well explained in the tutorial, but more important, a lot of information has changed over the years. Even the concept of star bases were added post-launch, and there's a lot to understand, and even that is outdated at times. By the time I was done, I had enough with the game that I had played for four hours. I didn't want to start another another run to struggle with a different race or different problems. Pick this up if you're willing to devote an extreme amount of time to understanding and watching tutorial videos, reading a lot of internet pages and posts, picking out what information is still valid in 2022 because things have definitely changed over the years. This is a 10 year old title which doesn't exactly scream fresh. The riders are lined up, it's important to have warmed up the tyres to have... Moto GP 22, Rum Room on a Motorcycle. It's a sports game. This time it's a motorcycle racing game. Moto GP 22 is an extremely realistic motorcycle racing game where you take corners at extreme speed and race against a large field of other motorcycles. You also will battle it out for positions on extremely dangerous vehicles. The sense of speed and graphics are impressive in Moto GP 22. 
Yet it's also extremely unfriendly to new players. Diving into it, it seems that the consensus is that the move from MotoGP 20 to 22 increased the difficulty significantly. Turning down the difficulty all the way and trying to tackle the tutorial or even a race is insanely hard, and I was unable to even place in a reasonable position after a couple hours. Pick this up if you're a fan of MotoGP 20 and want a more challenging game. This game though is so difficult that I don't think I'd recommend this to anyone new to the franchise or simulation motorcycle racing. If you do want to try it out though, be ready for an extreme challenge. It's not impossible mind you, but it won't welcome you with open arms. Inside. Limbo's sequel for better or worse. We need a little history lesson. Limbo was a smash hit in the second summer of arcade back in 2010. You played as a boy in a black and white world where you kept away from an unknown horror and kept moving to the right, and in a lot of ways that's also inside. Move to the right, avoid the dangers, and keep moving. But this is also a sequel to Limbo, and replaying it six years after I originally played it in 2016, I'm still not a fan of this title. It feels too much like its predecessor, but oftentimes not done as well. The vague dangers are now well detailed and visible. There's just a lack of interesting and deep puzzles though that Limbo had, and the story isn't as good, but there's more of it here. Pick this up if you want something that's a little more style than substance, but Inside just comes off as a dreary, boring game to me while I absolutely enjoyed Limbo. The biggest problem is the game goes for more thematic feelings rather than interesting challenges or puzzles and that really holds back my enjoyment here. It is a 6 year old title as well that most people who were interested in this probably have already played, but if you are interested, give it a shot. Looks like Colta is still smoldering. Keep an eye out for the rebel that got held here. Copy that. Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon Wildlands. Ubi Soft. Shoot enemies, bang bang, ride around areas, capture points, do that again and again and again. I'm just so over Ubisoft games and trying to talk about them because they all feel so similar, and even when they are different, which there are some differences here, they're just large sandboxes filled with large checklists of boring activities to do over and over. And yet, I don't totally hate Ghost Recon Wildlands, which surprised me after the lukewarm reception the game got. Don't get me wrong, it's not a great game, but this would have been a fun title to buy for like 20 to 30 bucks. They originally charged 60 for it, which is a problem, but getting it on Game Pass, I had fun with it, and probably would have had more fun if I played with a friend. There were some problems with the online service, but hopefully those will eventually get fixed if not done so already. Pick this up if you want to play with a friend or just want to haul ass around a nondescript jungle and kill everyone you meet. There's a decent amount of fun to be had in this title, and just playing through it was enjoyable, though I will say the lack of achievements in Ubisoft games bothers me a lot more than it should. Turbo Golf Racing Rocket League minus Soccer plus Golf Turbo Golf Racing is going for a recognizable style. Eight players will face off with each player given their own ball, and the goal of the game is to sink your ball into the hole as fast as possible. Not in strokes, but in time. You can only hit your own ball, and while there are weapons to use against each other, the focus is more on ball control and mastering the courses. There's also a small solo mode where you can practice the courses that will appear online and attempt to earn up to 3 stars based on time, but the game is fully focused on multiplayer and works well there. There are daily missions and more, but there's no signs of microtransactions yet. Though it does feel like that could change at some point, possibly when it leaves early access. The biggest problem though is after 2 or 3 hours, I found myself having my fill for the day. I could return in the future, but it's lacking those addictive elements at the core of Rocket League that keeps players coming back. Pick this up if you enjoy Rocket League but want to play golf. It's a very similar game even if the sports emulating is different and it's quite enjoyable. However, if you're getting this game outside of Game Pass, be aware it might not hold your attention that long and what's great to pick up and play as a quote free unquote offering from Microsoft, it's a bit expensive for what it is. Shenzhen IO, Zactronics once again. Last month we had Last Call BBS, which is a great new Zactronics game, and Shenzhen IO is here this month as a programming game for those who want to write some code. Shenzhen IO is focused on building circuits, which takes an in input from sources and outputs signals based on those inputs. It's an extremely nerdy programming game, but with a solid manual, great style, and a fantastic set of puzzles. This is a perfect example of Zactronics at their best. 
There are a lot of different challenges, but most of them involve the player laying out processors and then writing code to control what the object does. While this is a puzzle game, it's a puzzle game that's fully focused on writing assembly code, and that will only appeal to some people. This is also a bit of a draining process at times. I can usually only play to about a handful of these puzzles in one sitting before I feel physically tired. Maybe that's me, but this will challenge even professional programmers. Pick this up if you want to program or you like Zaktronics. There are a lot of reasons to check out Zaktronics games, and I just did a video detailing most of them, but they're a special type of puzzle game that's always unique. Here it's about coding up the processes to run on chips, and then potentially optimizing it if you want to challenge the leaderboards. If this looks like fun, and you want to learn some assembly, check it out. Here at Compass Radio, some of the team were a little concerned to hear that our listenership has gone down over the past few months. Two Point Campus, running a campus your way. Two Point Campus is in the Two Point Hospital franchise, though this time you're running a college campus. The idea is to meet the needs and desires of your students and run a successful school focused on yearly curriculums and bringing in that sweet, sweet cheddar that lets you grow your school. Many different campuses make up the level structure here and each campus has three different goals to challenge players. The downside of the game though is it's not too challenging early on and I doubt it will ever get that hard. I love Two Point Hospital but I cruise through it quickly and I already see Two Point Campus will either have to invent artificial challenges or ask for ridiculous goals. The game is a lot of min-maxing at times but also could be easily beaten by just waiting to gain more money or just building a bigger room to maximize the level of that room. Not that this is necessarily a bad thing. Pick this up if you like Management Sims. This is based on Two Point Hospital, but it's a similar style to Planet Coaster or Planet Zoo and a distant cousin of City Skylines. Plop down some stuff, watch your NPCs use it, and rake in that fat loot. I haven't found it as funny as Two Point Hospital, but I've fully engaged with this game yet again and I'm looking to play even more. Off-World Trading Company, an interesting and unique take on running a space corporation. Off-World Trading Company reminds me of Civilization a bit, which makes sense as one of the lead designers of Civilization 4 worked on this title, and it really shows. You play a space corporation, putting down your base, building different outposts across the map, and trying to maximize your profits so you can buy out your opponents, and that's kind of it. The game features limitations in the number of buildings players can create that will challenge players to maximize what they use to gather resources and process them. Those land claims add a lot of strategy to the game. However, I'm not sure how this game is for longevity. The end of the game involves buying out the majority ownership of all the other companies, which appears to be the only victory condition. So you need to rake in a ton of profit, there's only a handful of ways to do that. The end game feels interesting, but also like something that would become monotonous over multiple games because it's mostly a waiting game to maximize your profits. The idea though is fresh and each of the corporations have unique benefits. Pick this up if you like Galactic Civilization 3 from a couple months ago, Humankind from the beginning of this year, or really any civilization based game. It does feel like more of a board game than those titles, but the smaller scale and more direct competition makes players focus more on those interactions. Expeditions Rome, a RPG with a tactical battle system. Expeditions Rome takes players and throws them into Roman times, while you flee from enemies who kill your father and look to make a name for yourself. You'll meet a lot of interesting characters, many of which are based on real people, like this member of my party, Gaius Julius Caesar. I wonder if he'll be known for anything. Now, I probably mispronounced that name, but the game does an amazing job pronouncing each character's name in the authentic Latin, at least I assume so, and shows a love of the time period, even if it's not fully accurate. While the opening had several interesting battles that all felt different, this is a game that feels like it will eventually devolve into the typical kill everyone you see, or fail to create interesting locations to fight in. The dialogue works well, but it does seem to fall into the binary moral systems just with more categories represented at times. The movement outside of combat requires players to wait until the entire party does some action, like climbing a ladder but with like 5 characters it's a long process. Pick this up if you're a fan of Roman times or want to play a good RPG. Expeditions Rome is good and the writing and characters are interesting, however it does switch between RPG sections with a lot of heavy dialogue and combat sections with minimal dialogue very often. Still, I'm interested to see where this game goes and what happens to the characters in it. Cooking Simulator Run your own kitchen and make food your way. 
I'm a fan of cooking. I'm always interested in seeing how video games emulate it. Cooking Simulator has players running around a kitchen and cooking food that is ordered by faceless patrons that will complain about almost everything you do wrong. The goal is to prepare food exactly as the recipes require and in the time required, though you can customize your experience and play it in a relaxed mode with minimal time pressures. Cooking Simulator though has a couple of odd issues. I played and filmed myself on the Steam version, and it's mostly the same experience, however the Steam version has an achievement to get 5 stars on every dish, which is a challenging goal, and that's like 200 dishes I believe. Microsoft doesn't have that, and the Microsoft Store also lacks most of the DLC as well. Now the one specific thing about Cooking Simulator is it's a simulator game that's trying to be a bit wacky and I'm not fully sure why. I really enjoyed this game while playing normally and trying to master each disc which is challenging and that's what I found interesting about it but it often feels like the game is trying for more overreactions than skill to play. Feedback on what you've done wrong is sometimes hard to understand, and there's a lot of moments where it feels like the physics engine is random, like smashing a plate you're holding for some unknown reason, or knocking the door off of the oven for... I have no clue. Pick this up if you like the simulator genre or cooking. Now I'm actually working towards becoming a better chef over the last year and have made some huge strides towards that. Cooking here is quite fun, however if you're new to the simulator genre, definitely start with Power Wash Simulator. That game was phenomenal and quite a bit better than this one. Even though I do enjoy this title, I also think the difference in achievements between Steam and Microsoft might be a deal breaker. I'd personally rather play this on Steam, though the game itself is really fun. And that's what I have for this month. 12 games is pretty sparse, and August is early for the releases to pick up with fall being a time for the major releases coming up, but I feel like this list could have been better. What strikes me though is the age of these games. Now I'm sure some of these games are releasing for the first time on consoles or in the Microsoft Store, but I need to throw some numbers at you. First, Two Golf Racing, Two Point Campus, MotoGP 22, and As Dusk Falls all came out in the last month, so of course those are extremely fresh. Expeditions Rome came out last year, so still good. But the other seven games all predate 2020 on PC, and just to be clear, I'm using the dates on the Steam Store, which seems pretty accurate. 2019 was the year Cooking Simulator came out. Not bad. In 2017, Ghost Recon Wildlands came out. 2016, Shenzhen IO, Offworld Trading Company, and Inside were all released. And finally, way, way, way back in 2012, Sins of a Solar Empire Rebellion was released. That's 10 years old. Even if these games have just come to the Microsoft Store or consoles, almost half of these games were made 5 years ago or more. That's pretty bad. I think this month is just a sign that Microsoft can't get the newest titles every single month, but I don't know if all these games were needed, it's not the best month by far. Looking at the August video last year, it was actually a far different experience. So let's talk about 5 games you should check out, the 5 recommendations of the month. Let's start with the 5th strongest game this month, and that's Shenzhen IO. I'm a huge Zaktronics fan, so if you like Last Call BBS and you want something nerdier, check this one out. But I also can't ignore that it is extremely technical and is going to appeal more towards programmers. It is still worth giving it a shot if you want something different. The 4th strongest game this month is Cooking Simulator. While it's hardly a perfect game and not the best cooking game, it's still a lot of fun. I returned to play even more of this title because making various dishes were interesting and enjoyable, and I wanted to see what else I could make. The third strongest game of this month is for the Ubisoft formula, let's just call it that. It's represented by Tom Clancy Ghost Recon Wildlands, but this could also be Watch Dogs 2. These are rather fun to play, and while it might not have been excited to pay full price for them, jumping on them in Game Pass or for like 20 bucks would probably be a good deal. Just don't expect too much and you have a good time. I'm just not really ready to give two recommendation slots for the same type of game, and lack of achievements does count against these titles. The second strongest game of this month is Expeditions Rome. This is a meaty RPG with a tactical battle system. There's solid writing and combat that feels interesting. With people reporting that this will take you 40 hours, there's quite a lot here, and probably even more if players want to approach the game differently. That's a lot of gameplay for a single title. This leaves my top recommendation this month, and it was a game that I was the most excited for, Two Point Campus. Two Point Campus feels like a game that I'll throw hours into as I build up various campuses, achieve a variety of goals, and experience what it's like to run a campus. There's always something to do in this titles and I love the style here. My wife however says there's not enough paperwork to simulate actually running a college and well that's why it's a game. Check this one out. And that's what I have for this games this month. So about the title of this video, I used to call these Game Pass Reviews, and I liked it, but I also realized it's a bit misleading. My goal has never been to review Game Pass as a service in these videos, I focus on reviewing the games themselves, so there's gotta be a better name for the videos, I figured I might as well try to find it. If you have suggestions, feel free to leave them in the comments. 
If this new title has worked and you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. This video meant something to you obviously and I try to cover everything coming to Game Pass. I'll also be popping up my Game Pass reviews, which now you know what they are, you might want to check out to see if there's any other titles you've missed on the service and should check out. As always, liking, commenting, and sharing are great ways to help the channel and I appreciate every single one of them. Finally, in regards to Zaktronics and Shenzhen IO, if you want to know more about that company or the game, check this video out. It's my farewell to Zaktronics and if anything is going to make you try out one of those titles, well maybe it's this. See you next time.